Risk and advisory services firm PWC South Africa has flagged the impact of the KZ10 floods, especially on manufacturing and transport, including rising labor costs and inflation as the key factors affecting the country's economic outlook. In their report released today, the firm says the weakening rand and load shedding will add to woes faced by employers and employees. Joining me to talk more about this is Dr. Christy Felyun, PwC's senior manager and economist. Uh, Dr. Felyun, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, this evening. Well, every data set coming out of South Africa paints a grim picture of economic growth uh, prospects. How exactly uh, do you foresee salaries and wages being put under pressure by the KZ10 floods? Well, the biggest impact from the KZN floods for the consumer is the slowdown in transport activity and slowdown in manufacturing. We know that the port of Durban is our most important harbor. Uh, we import so many goods, including food items, including fuel, into that harbor. So as soon as the port of Durban slows down, it puts pressure on the supply of goods. And whenever there's pressure on supply, there's going to be an upward pressure on prices as well. So there's big concern that this is combining with the pressure we're seeing from the invasion in Ukraine and all the effect that that is having on commodity prices. So it's really not a good situation when we're trying to think of South African consumers uh, and the high unemployment rate and, and people's inability to often afford the basic goods that they need to survive. Uh, Dr. Phil Yoon, you're also saying in this report that increasing staff costs, um, you know, with that uh, being led by also inflation, what are employers facing in the coming months? As the report says that unions are demanding an average across the board 6% wage increase. So what we're seeing when inflation goes up is that it's basically it's cost of living. It's for normal South Africans getting more expensive to pay for their goods and services. And when that happens, they expect their employers to give them a larger increase in their, in their wages and salaries because they need to keep up with how these prices are going. And it basically means that South African employers, businesses, big and small, will now need to think about what are they going to pay their staff in the next 6 to 12 months. Until a few months ago, there wasn't a really big concern about inflation. I think many companies were thinking these upward adjustments, these annual increases in, in salaries, it wasn't going to be big. But now suddenly with this combination of factors, it means that companies need to look at this much more seriously. And I think the big risk is that they need to pass these costs on to their clients again. So you need to pay your staff more, and that's going to be working into your prices that you ask for your clients. So it's, it's a bit of a, a cycle of higher inflation, pushing up more inflation, which is very unfortunate at this stage. And then there's obviously concern about the Reserve Bank. They're needing to lift interest rates even more and much quicker than they are anticipating at this stage. You've also have uh, developed different scenarios on the employment outlook, job creation, unemployment levels that we should expect in the coming months and years. Tell us more about those in relation to this economic outlook report you have released today. So historically, there's been a very close relationship between economic growth and employment growth. Now, the past three years, that hasn't really been the case. So uh, many economists are trying to figure out where employment and unemployment is going in the next year or two. And it, it's quite challenging. And that's why we're looking at different scenarios, uh, scenarios where there is actually strong employment growth, which I guess is not necessarily that likely. Uh, we're looking at scenarios where employment growth is going to be slow as it has been for many, many years. Now, the big risk there is that with slow employment growth, with more people adding to the labor market when they finish school, finish uh, tertiary education, that unemployment rate is going to continue rising. We already have the highest unemployment rate in the world, and we're well aware of the social risk that we have due to poverty and inequality. So our concern is in a year which is uh, quite, uh, quite busy from a political perspective for South Africa, uh, that these economic factors will add to further pressure on the government when it comes to its decisions on how and where it spends money. 
Dr. Pelun, that disruption to over 1,100 businesses and consumer activity in KZN is well noted. You are anticipating that these events will have a massive impact on the South African economy overall, although they are only happening in KZN, but the output, the economic output in KZN is quite large when you look at South Africa's GDP. Yes, it's, it's the second largest provincial economy after Gauteng. So not only is KZN a, a driver of economic activity, but it's also facilitating others. So Gauteng would export most of its good via the ports of Durban. So that means that whenever you can't export from Durban, it's putting pressure on the Gauteng economy as well. So not only is there pressure on uh, manufacturing, for example, in Durban, we know there's lots of big manufacturing industrial activity going on there. It's not only there that the pressure is, but when we have disrupted transport, it's placing pressure on Gauteng as an example also. And because of the situation at the ports, it means that there's additional pressure on other large port activity. In Cape Town, for example, you'll see more ships arriving in Cape Town than previously expected. So it's placing us under a bit of more strain when it comes to the transport situation. Um, and we know South Africa already has lots of challenges when it comes to transport. So it's certainly not a good picture right now for what the next few months could look like for the economy um, and we're just hoping we can, can clear that up quickly enough so that it doesn't impact us too deep into the year. And of course you are now expecting uh, South Africa's economic growth to slow from 4.9% uh, last year to 1.8% this year, uh, slightly below these forecasts that we've seen from various uh, quarters. Yes, so last year was a great year. That 4.9% was obviously as we were bouncing back from the 2020 recession. And then I think many forecasts for this year until very recently, looking at economic growth of 2 2.5%. Uh, but now we have to keep track of what's going on in the real world. Uh, the situation in Ukraine, what's it doing to commodity prices? The situation in KZN, where we've had significant infrastructure damage, businesses needing to close down temporarily. When we take into account all of those factors. It basically means that our economy cannot grow as quickly as we previously hoped or previously expected. So yes, uh, economic growth of 1.8% may be a little bit on the low side at this stage, but I think quite a few economists will in the next few weeks and at least by next month be revising down their numbers as well, simply because the case that in economy is so important for South Africa as a whole. Dr. Christy Feliun, economist and senior manager at PwC, they're telling us about the grim outlook, economic outlook uh, for South Africa, looking at the events that uh, took place in KZN with floods, meaning that everyone in South Africa is going uh, to feel the pain.